Hi there and welcome to another episode of the Sage Running Podcast. I believe this is episode number 28. It's been a while, but we have a special guest on the show tonight. My dad. Dad, welcome to the show. Thanks, Sage. And we'll plug the Avery beer that we are drinking here. Pear of Peaches, Imperial Hazy IPA with pears and peaches from Avery Brewing Co., Boulder, Colorado. Cheers, Dad. Very tasty. Yes. Yeah, what do you think about the beer? It is good. Very tasty. And it's very different. Avery's very creative with their I know. different blends. and. Uh, but we're mainly going to talk about running, how my dad got into running. Uh, well, you were a runner in high school. A little bit. No, only junior high. But later in life. You also got into running later in life. Yeah. So we'll talk about your background in that. Uh, training for your first longer trail race this year you did at the age of 65 right just turned 65 and then uh yeah getting into running later in life but you you were an athlete in high school uh as a freshman, a freshman. yeah, yeah. I, I, I i did i was on i've been track and i did shorter distances and then i did talk about wrestling team <laughs> oh yeah wrestling that's, oh, yeah. that's a tough sport yeah i was in pretty good shape then but from then until I started running, I was probably not in the best of shape for a long period of time, as far as, as, far as cardiovascular is. Yeah. I'm concerned. But you did, you did, you were doing track. Right. You did long jump, yeah. sprints. Yeah. So you had some speed Nothing in long. that. Nothing long. Nothing long. No, no, it wasn't very good. 400 meters? Yeah. Nah, that wasn't that good. <laughs> so then, you, you know, you took a break. Went into uh, working life, worked as a, a public school teacher, science yeah. teacher for right. 31 uh, years. 31 years. Yeah. Uh, I was in his class. Uh, <laughs> great class. We had a lot of fun doing physics, chemistry, yeah. all that. And uh, So you were, you were pretty busy, waking up early, right. driving long commute, right. taking care of us. Right. No time to run, really. At, at the time. time. At one, yeah, at that time, yeah, there wasn't. Too pretty, pretty busy. It wasn't until you were in high school and uh, your sister Ming started doing wheelchair stuff, and I think we all entered a 10k down in Scandia. Uh, this, some, yeah, Scandia Road Race, yeah. Junction City, yeah. uh, we had, Oregon. We, were just, we had all four family members in that race. That was my first long, kind of long race, you know, 6.2. But, um, yeah, my little sister, my older brother, right. and then you were running. Yeah. Mom was probably carrying the camera. <laughs> she was. Um, she runs a bit too, yeah. for your runner. But yeah, you ran your 10k of one of your fastest times there. It's I a flat, yeah. fast course. Yeah, about 50, about 50 minutes. Uh, yeah, a little over 50 minutes, I think. And so that was 15, 13 years ago, I think we figured I think we out. Cal- yeah, about 13 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Six. I'd run one other 5k maybe before that, and uh, that's about it. Yeah. So you were already in your in your 50s. Correct. And you're running pretty low mileage. Low mileage. Like, like 10, 15 miles a week. Would you probably, say? yeah, 10 to 15. Yeah, we live out in the, in the hillside, so you're doing some hill work, you're running on gravel roads. Nothing, nothing but, is up, nothing is level. Nothing's flat, nothing's yeah. flat. But not like real serious training until more recently. Right. When you signed up for, uh, we've done, you did some halves. You also did yeah. some half marathons, so. Yeah, yeah. Moving up no, over right, the years. Yeah, I did. I did. One half in Portland. I think I ran a one, something like a one, uh, what did I run? 156 maybe? Like I think you probably ran faster than that eventually. Maybe in your first one. Uh, I'm not sure I ran a second one, but I think it did. It, 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 it would have been a while ago. Nothing, nothing, I mean, but a half is not like a 20 mile, 20 mile with a lot of vertical on the, on the trails. <laughs> yeah, so we, we did this race this year, right? 20 miles, 32K. On the trails with what? How much elevation gain is it? You sent it for? I want to say it's over three thousand, thirty eight hundred. I think. Thirty eight hundred feet. Yeah, I think. I think. So it's like twelve hundred meters, eleven hundred meters of climbing, yeah. out on the Oregon coast. It's beautiful, beautiful course. Yeah. yeah. Goes, up goes up Cape Perpetua from uh, Yahats, and goes, goes up some up loops up the beautiful trails up into the very nice, nice forest, forest, and then. Then back and get you through uh, yachts around, just right around the ocean, waves crashing. It's just a beautiful course. In the woods out there, is, what was it called again? Uh, it's the Oregon Coast. 
Did they do a 50K on Saturday and a, and a 30K on Sunday? And uh, uh, the 50Ks, just because there's a bigger loop up the valley and a little bit out and back on the beach. Uh, uh, but, and maybe I, I'd like to do that sometime. But, yeah. Uh, so getting into it, I know you had signed up for it. You were a little nervous about it because you'd never done something that long, especially on trails with climbing. Right. What's the thought process there? You kind of like sign up for it months in advance and you're like, oh crap, what, what am I going to do? I haven't run. Well, I, I've actually signed up for it two years ago. And, and when I cranked it up to 40 miles a week, I thought I got a fr stress fracture, which in the long run over a period of months of testing and medical stuff, Turned out not to be the case after we decided. Uh, and so I resumed training, but by that time I had lost my momentum to develop to a distance race again. So I got, I was always worried about getting that, whatever the pain was, probably more like tendonitis, uh, to return it again. And it hasn't. And so I was able to crank it up, um, up to a couple 40 mile weeks before I, I ran this. And that, again, that's with vertical and it up each week, nothing. Nothing we do around here is not very cool. To it. So um, that was a confidence builder, but you know, I never up to up to that point, I'd only run maybe 17 miles at once in my life out out here, which is less than I'm sure less than three hours at the time, and so I never run this length of time before or that distance. So yeah, but you you practice you practice with the the, the spring energy. I did. You did some long runs. Yes, I did. And wear it. I hadn't worn or carried a handheld for ever, and so I did practice doing that. And uh, you had your speed Hoka speed goats on. Oh yeah, love the love the speed goats. Um, I wore out two pairs. I think uh, over the last, I, I wear them to death. So I well, you wear them every day when you're I wear, working I wear, in the, I wear, the yard too. I wear them when I'm working. I, yeah. I wear them everywhere. And we have some pretty rocky roads around here, so. I mean, your typical, one of your typical training runs, seven miles up and down the hill, it's over a thousand feet of climbing about, about a thousand Oh yeah, feet. every, yeah, every, yeah, every So minute. 300 meters of, of vertical gain over, uh, it's like 11 kilometers, 12 kilometers. Yeah. It's a, it's not a flat run. So you're getting in that strength, coming off the road stuff. Um, and yeah, doing it at, at 65, you're able to take us through the race, I guess you were. A little worried. I know you were worried about the cutoffs. You were worried about the aid stations. Like, what, what goes through your mind in these your first big trail race? Uh, well, uh, my wife and, and my uh, uncle Bill, who's eighty nine, came out to crew me. But you can't crew at this race. But they they came out to, to cheer me on at the midway point, uh, up up by the uh, lookout over uh, Cape Perpetua. But so I. I that was great to have them there. So that, that, that you know, really gave me a positive attitude. They were all smiles and everything in the morning, but I was a little nervous, but it's, it's a, a really cool race. They start off and, and uh, you're running on the flats through town, on the edge of town, uh, right along the coast. Just a beautiful trail kind of on the edge of town, but the coastline's on one side. And uh, you do that slightly uphill for about two and a half miles. And then you turn on the cross 101 and uh, you get on um, the, the, the trail, the trail, part of the Trail of Tears, uh, one of the Trail of Tears stories mm -hmm. of uh, the Native American saga out here in the Northwest, um, which is another whole other story. But anyway, it just climbs relentlessly for about two miles. And that's, that's where everything, everybody's crawl, you know, starts crawling up. But the main thing that surprised me is, is well, there, you got to go about six, almost seven miles into the first aid station. And it's nothing but climbing except for the last down of the aid station. And um, the, the, the number of routes on the course was surprising to me. Because once you get on a downhill and start going, back, can gain some speed, there were so many patches of routes that you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't get any speed going through those. It was, it was more technical, technical than I thought. Your introduction to, to technical yeah. trail running, see? You know, I, I was expecting the vertical, but I wasn't expecting that much, that many roots. Tree roots could add an element of technicality. and Yeah, you wouldn't expect that necessarily, even I, in Oregon, but uh, it depends on the trail, how exposed it is, if it rained. Didn't Tara Ware have a lot of roots in it? Well, yeah, but that was in New Zealand. I know, I know, but I'm trying to think of other courses, like Lake Sonoma is not a... No, Lake Sonoma is 
pretty smooth. Pretty smooth. This was Dirt. not like that. Yeah. This was uh, mud wasn't an issue, but the, the the roots were the main issue. You couldn't enjoy parts of it, the forest because you're looking down all the time where you put your feet. Yeah, this is these not this little root patches. These were like you know, 50, 100 feet of roots. Of, wow. You know, where you're dancing around, but. But do you have any doubts, like low energy points or no? I cut off was looming. Was everything no, steady? No, I, I was using the um, uh, the electrolyte formula from Spring uh, with with uh, uh, I think I used about five or six canterberries, which I really I honestly do like. It has his, it has color. his name in it. Well, it has that, his there's name that, in it. but I do like it. Um, and then uh, I think a power rush um, somewhere along the way. Um, and a few chips and stuff at the aid stations, but you only see aid stations twice. It's, you know, fueling wasn't too much, too bad. It was just it's cool enough. To, it was perfect, really, weather. Uh, not too hot, not too cold, not rainy. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I, I think I didn't reach a low point until the last two miles. <laughs> Last two miles, you're rolling for the high. I know, though, I know. You, 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 dump, you dump out on the 101, you cross it, and then you're starting back through yachts again along that same trail going back to the to the, to the hotel where it starts, uh, the Adobe. And it, it um, my legs were not feeling great. <laughs> but what, what really kept me going is that there were packs of people all younger than me that I'm thinking I could... <laughs> I it just I, I want to keep with them, um, and it I just felt good that I was able to finish. I, and so I, I didn't know where I was in the pack. I had no idea. Um, and when I finished and realized after I looked at the, you know, they finished in the top, and I think about fifty five percent of the people were in front of me, forty five percent were behind me. So I, I was like pretty surprised at that. But uh, finishing, yeah, right in the center. Of yeah. a pack that's probably mostly younger than they you. They were mostly younger. There were and fairly experienced trail runners out here in Oregon. There are a lot there of times are. too. Yeah. There were a lot of nice people I talked to on the trail. The race director I talked to. Um, uh, everything's real, pretty low key. They have. Uh, they're making pizzas at the end and and serving beer. And um, it's right there on the ocean. The the venue. The start and finish is right. I mean the waves are crashing. You know, within a hundred feet, two hundred feet of where you are. So uh, I highly recommend the race. Um, uh, yeah. So congrats on that finish. Yeah, that was a, a good. It was great. Good first trail race. Now we got to get up to a marathon or ultra. Is that is that the next progression here? The next progression, I think, is a marathon, um, either a, a maybe a flat trail marathon. I'd like to run something a little flatter, see how fast I can go. It's five hours. I finished just under five hours for that that twenty uh, that twenty miler. Um, I think I can run a marathon faster than that. On, on, I don't know. Without tree roots. Without, without tree, tree roots, roots and without yeah. three or four thousand feet much climbing. climbing. Yeah, on the coast. Um, so yeah, I'd like to try that, but I, I think on a flat trail would be my preference instead of on the pavement. But we'll see. And then eventually, my goal is sometime to do a fifty k. But you could do it, Dad. Before I'm seventy. Before I'm. Before he's seventy. That's my goal. Well, you've only got a little more than four years now. So, uh, pressure's on for that commitment. Gosh, it is only a little bit more than four years. Yeah, because I knew your birthday was yeah, yeah, coming up in the winter, so it's... Uh, so I guess that's doable. I gotta find, a, I think, a flat 50k to do it. Too. <laughs> could compromise on that. There's a lot of good 50ks. Yeah, I'm not doing speed goat. I'm not doing speed goat yet, not, not yet. Okay. But, uh... That would be fun to do, though. And I'll have to apologize, I'm a little, I'm still a little ill, I've got... Some sneezy congestion going on. He does. Try to stay away from, from Dad. Uh, we were out filming yesterday uh, at the long run in Forest Park. Dad was out on his bike. He's always been ultra supportive <laughs> over the years of my running, going to... You talked me into it. Basically every single yesterday. track meet, cross-country meet, as many as you could go to at least. That's true. Um, didn't see very many college meets because we were on the opposite sides of the U.S., <laughs> Did we see any college? I don't think you saw a single... The, the, actually, the one that you saw that I was in college, you flew to the Olympic Trials Marathon. That's right. I in did. New York City. Yeah. In 2007, I qualified for the Olympic Trials Marathon. 
I knew I was going to drop out <laughs> after five miles, but it was the experience. Was epic, yeah. He got yeah, a video clip fun. of uh, us running into Central Park. I was, was in the fun. lead pack with uh, Brancel <laughs> and, and Ritzenheim and Abdi and the guys that made the Olympic team, I guess. But uh, That was fun. Yeah, it was a good experience there. But I don't think we saw a college race. No, it was it was too far. Uh, yeah, it was. I know. We, and I was working, you know, full time during your, uh, that time also. And yeah. I think Pam was too. Yeah, it was hard during the school year, yeah. and uh, but you know, after after uh, well, the marathon trials in two thousand twelve, Houston. Uh, you've seen a lot of my other marathons. You've seen a lot of the trail races. You've probably seen him in videos, <laughs> crewing yeah. at at Lake Sonoma with the GoPro on his head. Uh, White River. Oh, yeah. Well, White you've River. been to Lake Sonoma several times. North yeah. Face. UTMB. UTMB. Oh, yeah, you're in the UTMB video that yeah. uh, Matt Trapp filmed yeah. for Hoka. So, uh, getting into running later in life and still being supportive. So, really thank Dad for that. It's Can't thank fun. you enough. Well, I, you know, it's, you, it, when you and Ming and Zen all ran, it kind of got... It, you, you guys are the ones that got me into it, really. Um, and... and uh, my wife too, Pam, you know, we all run now, and I think, you know, because you kids started it, um, you know, and if it hadn't been for you changing from soccer to <laughs> to running, uh, which was a good move, Sage, uh, I, I'm not sure, you know, I don't know if Jen would have gotten into running, and, and maybe me neither. Well, to be fair, my older brother actually got into running... He got into cross country first, so my older brother is two years older than me. I was playing soccer till sixth grade. I started doing track and playing soccer. So dad was driving me. I do I do track practice right after school at the middle school that he taught at, and then an hour later I'd have soccer practice in the evening in another town to yeah. play soccer. So he's taking me to two practices. That's true. You were, I mean, you were still working at the school yeah. during my track practice, but I was, then, then you were taking me to soccer tournaments in like Bend, Oregon, which is three hour, four hour drive yeah. on the weekends or in right. Portland, I was playing soccer, but I wasn't very good at soccer. My older brother started going out for cross country when he was in high school. So seventh grade, when I was 13 years old, was really the catalyst. He started going out for cross country. Oh. I said, I want to do cross country too. And you went out for cross country in eighth grade because we... You, we there was a cross country team at well. There was a, team. a there was a team, team of three, <laughs> three middle people. school runners in our town from different schools. From, from two different middle schools. That would run unattached officially, really. Yeah, yeah. In uh, or you need five five kids to score as a complete cross country team. We had right. three uh, co ed actually. It was, a, it was just two guys <laughs> and a girl, so we couldn't even we weren't no. a team, but we we would race unattached at like the Junior Olympic USATF and there would be practice cross country meets. We'd run 4K. Yeah, but you would, you know, you shuttled me around to some of those. You got into running. You bought me Jack Daniels Distance Running Formula, first edition. I talk about that book all the time. Yeah, in eighth grade. Dad bought it for me uh, that many years ago. It had just come out. Yeah. And that changed everything with coaching and, uh, you know, doing the videos and I think I started making you film some of my high school <laughs> track meets. Probably. Because I wanted to see my terrible. form. I'd be like, I had a bad race, I want to analyze my form in the 1500. Or, right, right. Uh, you know, you'd film, you were there filming the... Oh, yeah. Some of my best races in cross country, right? right. The district meet, Pac-9 district meet at Clackamas. That's uh, right. And I was like, Dad, hold the camera. And the, these were old-fashioned video cameras. You didn't have SLRs back then or... No, running on cassette tapes. There, everything's on cassette. We have all you kids running your, you yeah. Know, every, you know, it. We have quite a collection. Qu quite a collection of footage. <laughs> still trying to digitize right. a lot of it, but uh, to. thanks to the support of of my dad, and uh, yeah, really helped me out along the way. Final thing we'll touch on. Final thing we'll touch on uh, is is you've been vegetarian. Interesting note. Vegetarian for. 45 years? I think 45, 46, no more than that, since I was 40, 47 years. 47 40, years. Almost 48 years. As, 48 years yeah, as yeah, a vegetarian yeah. almost. Yeah, from high, so, school, from high school. That's a, when I was 17. Oh, I thought it was when you went to college. No, I started in high school. I, I, I ate meat one time after my 18th birthday. 18th birthday. 
Yeah, and that was within like two or three months of that. So, that, I mean, uh, uh, intentionally one time, accidentally, there's been two many times, times, countless times. Well, I don't think that one. Uh, I'm pretty careful, but sometimes you don't know though. You order something at Taco Bell and it's a yeah. beef burrito instead of a bean burrito. Well, Got to pronounce it. <laughs> There's that. Yeah, but it had just been, you know, it's part of the reason why I was born and raised vegetarian, but I always had a choice. My parents said, you try anything. I did try some things. Like, you know, friends have pepperoni your, pizza your parties. Your brother tried everything. Yeah, my brother, he, he still tries a lot of things, but, yeah. you know, it was my personal choice to stay vegetarian uh, basically the rest of my life. And, but being, you know, raised in this environment, you've gotten really creative in the kitchen. You're not just a, a chef, but like a really good vegetarian, vegan, now more vegan chef, and, more, more and not only just sure. cooking, but, but also pastries. Like you made this amazing coffee cake, vegan coffee cake this morning. Cranberry. Oh, cranberry almond, or no, cranberry pecan. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were having pizza tonight that had this uh, cash, or almond, blanched almond yeah. cheese on it. Yeah, yeah. Lots of, uh, yeah. How was that made? It was soaked almonds and soaked water. almonds with uh, with some lemon juice and some a little bit of olive oil and salt and and uh, blend that up. So the lemon juice gave it that tang, and you yeah. blend it up so it's like creamy. So it's like this dollop of oh, yeah. of cream cheese. You have to have a pretty good high speed blend or a you know a little, little high speed blender makes it just it, it's nice. It's like a good cream cheese substitute. Uh, just about anywhere. Yeah, not a cream cheese or ricotta. More like a ricotta actually. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, growing up, we were always having veggie stir-fry. The other night, you made a tofu stir-fry uh, mm -hmm. on rice. We're eating, you know, cereal and oatmeal for breakfast a lot and toast and peanut butter. He says he really likes peanut butter. You see oh, why, yeah. you know, peanut butter, we like coffee a lot. Um, so, you know, the culinary side of the Canada family. Of course, Mom is also a very good cook and baker as well. But you've really pulled your weight in the kitchen. Uh, over the years, and it seems like you actually have a joy for I think, for cooking and experimenting yeah. in the kitchen, finding new recipes always. And my parent, my mom, did not like to cook. I mean, she had some great dishes she cooked, but she didn't like to cook. So, uh, as kids, we would fend for ourselves, and we t kind of taught ourselves how to cook. Uh, but I could, you know, and my grandparents helped teach me and my sister how to cook, and so uh, I, I kind of like it as almost like a hobby. Uh, I enjoy it, you know, you can get burned out on it sometimes, but uh, with plant-based cooking, there's so many, so many new recipes and creative ideas coming up. Uh, I just, you know, it's astounding that people think it's a, a bland diet of some sort uh, because there's so many creative things going on right now uh, that I'm enjoying exploring. So it's uh, kind of a new avenue to go out in and cooking, I think, and exciting. Awesome. Well, I benefit from it a lot, and uh, it's been really tasty to be home for these few days. Yeah. But uh, thanks. We're going to wrap up here. Uh, thanks so much to my dad for being on the podcast again. Thanks to him for filming huh. the other day on the bike. You'll see that YouTube video, yep. the Long Run and Force. Filled by quads. It, he, he weren't, he, it was a really crappy bike. We had to fix the tire. It hadn't been working for years. I hadn't been working on I you had a bike you for had like been 15 bike. years. Dad hadn't been on a bike for 15 years. He's yes. been running a lot, though. I made yeah. him run a lot this week. Uh, but thanks to Dad for getting those shots in the mud, uh, on the bikes, with all the support in ultras over the years. Good work, Cheers, out. Dad. Good luck uh, with your training and Thank your racing. You. Uh, too first sage. marathon and ultra coming up before he's 70, 70 years old. Hopefully, so hopefully. Welcome to that. All right. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe on here if you like these types of videos. There'll be more training talks, training for an OTQ series. Uh, check out our audio podcast, audio-only version of this. Thank you again. Thanks to the Patreon supporters. Thanks to the title sponsor, Hoka One One, for making this all possible. Avery Brewing for the beverages tonight. Stay tuned for more.